Welcome back to another episode of Pick Up and Play, folks. My name is DJ Switch, and today is definitely going to be a very interesting interview. Uh, when I started this show, I started talking to a bunch of my friends in the retro gaming community, and I knew as I was getting started that I would need other folks to interview. And so I started asking my friends, like, hey, who do you think would be a good person on the show? And then I would have them on the show, and, and then I would ask those folks, who do you think would be a good person on the show? And so today is a friend of a friend whom I had never interacted with before, and this ended up being one of my favorite interviews so far to date. His name is Retro Rob. He had a Facebook group, and... Today, we're going to have a conversation about what happened to that Facebook group, where he's been, what he's been up to, and what he's planning to do in the future. Of course, we'll also get into some of his background and history in video gaming and what really made him fall in love with video gaming over time. Uh, it's a fantastic interview. I really hope you enjoy this episode. Of course, as always, I got to give a big thank you to all of my folks at Patreon. Don't forget, patreon.com slash DJ Switch PDX is where you can find extra content for every single episode that I've released so far for this series. Those extra levels, I'm calling them lost levels. Excuse me, ex extra episodes. I'm calling them lost levels. Uh, and so far, I've been able to record extra content for every single episode that I've released through this series. So if you want to see more and uh, you want to support the show, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash DJ switch PDX. Big thank you to all of my Patreon folks. And of course, a huge thank you to my sponsor vault 31 bar for supporting the show and helping me keep the bills paid and helping me continue to utilize the tools that I've been using to be able to produce this show at a high level. Okay. With all of that being said, please enjoy this interview with retro Rob. Hey Rob, thanks for doing the show today. I appreciate you being here. Hey, thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, I definitely want to chat <clears throat> in a minute. I want to chat about what happened on Facebook because that's kind of an interesting story, I think, and and uh, definitely we're talking about. But I actually want to start by going back to little Retro Rob, and I want to find <laughs> out a little bit more about what kind of games were you playing when you were younger? Did you have a favorite? Any crazy experiences? Anything like that? Uh, my journey is weirder than everyone else's. Uh, I didn't get, we didn't have a uh, consoles growing up. We didn't have the money for it. It mm -hmm. just wasn't in the cars and it wasn't cause we were poor or anything like that. Just my dad was in the Navy and my mom, you know, she was, she was doing what she could for work. And so, yeah. you know, priorities took over, you know, you gotta, you gotta take care of the kids clothes, feed them, you know? Um, so we just yeah. consoles, consoles weren't in the cards, you know? Um, but my friends had them. So I, I definitely spent a lot of time at friends houses and um also okay. the arcades arcades were like my first intro to video game and me and my brother man if we could get a stack of quarters you know we were set to go play whatever was out there yeah um, man it was it wasn't until i was uh just about 12 or so i got the game boy oh there you go so that's that started everything for me was the game boy that's that's a hell of a place to start man so uh <laughs> i i assume you had tetris yeah, yeah, the pack in was Tetris. Yep. <laughs> uh, but what other uh, what other stuff were you playing on the Game Boy back then? So again, money, you know, being an issue, uh, I didn't get a game for a while. So the first game I got uh, out of the box was Batman, the 1989 movie. Nice. And uh, it's my so people ask me all the time, "What's your favorite game of all time?" It's it's actually that game because it was the first game we could afford, and yeah. it was the first game. It was the first game I ever beat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. So it's, it means a lot to me. And so uh, that it, it's uh, it's always going to be my favorite uh, question to answer. And I go with Batman. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, it's uh, I have a I have a similar sort of feeling about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, Ocarina of Time is actually my favorite game of all time. And that's another episode for another day. But uh, <laughs> but man, whenever I think about retro gaming specifically, um, I remember the hours and hours I dumped into Sonic the Hedgehog 2 yeah. and how I can still pick that game up now. And even though I know that game forwards and backwards, I still love just running around. I, I honestly think Sonic 2 was peak Sonic for me. 
Oh man, absolutely. Uh, that's, and so that, that's where I got my, my first console. Finally, I started working when I was 13 mm. and, uh, after I, you know, a few, few years developed a savings <laughs> account and, uh, I got a Sega Genesis. That was my first console ever. So. Gotta love those child labor laws of the nineties, right? <laughs> yeah. So 13, but you know, your parents had to sign like a waiver and the yeah. school had the, the school had to say it was okay too. Yeah, dude, I was a third. I worked at six flags, great America. I worked at a theme park. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I was a games host, man. I had to wear this crazy outfit <laughs> and I had to have a microphone and I was all pimply and I got this big nose and like I was trying to get people to come over and play these games, man. It was so it was so awful. <laughs> what kind of games though? Like like carnival games, like ring yeah, toss like, and like, like Yeah, like like wiffle ball and you gotta get it in the muffin tin and a certain color of the muffin tin gets you a stuffed animal or Okay, like, okay. Yeah. Or shoot the basketball. Yeah, I was that dude, man. <laughs> but at thirteen, <laughs> do you ever, so, uh, do you ever, do you ever like, you know, like that 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 especially cute kid that looked like they were just in love with that stuffed animal? You ever like hook them up or like, you know, uh, no, fudge fudge the actually. winnings a little bit? No, I think I think honestly that my most uh, like. Well, it's a traumatic memory more than anything. Is the wet money people would pull out? It was so disgusting. Ew, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> so listen, I've been spinning records for 25 years and yeah. in 25 years, uh, I, I only worked in adult entertainment clubs for three months, Jeez, three months. That's all I could take. I was like, Nope, I'm out. Like, I can't with this place. Like I'm so done now to be fair, the place I worked was far from the, what they would, I guess, consider higher end. Okay. places uh <laughs> yeah. which might have had something to do with it um yeah. but yeah man like i i i have certainly had my fair share of drama even just in the nightclubs like when i was doing just standard nightclub stuff and people would want to like tip me a couple bucks to play a song or whatever if that if those dollar bills were wet or if uh or if like a girl pulled them out of her shirt or something like i just nah, nah i'm yeah. good you can just set that over there <laughs> i don't need to touch that <laughs> that's so terrible <laughs> let's talk more about video games so <laughs> uh so rob i uh it sounds like you you kind of started out with the game boy the genesis at what point did you decide to start getting into collecting so honestly it was when the the nineties man with the, after the Genesis, I moved up to the Sega CD. Um, and I remember getting it for 99 bucks when it was on sale oh. and yeah. And it was the model two one, you know, the real sleek looking one. Oh yeah. If only and that's what video games cost anymore. <laughs> I know. And, uh, it, it kind of, I went down this wormhole. I, I actually was able to get a, um, the gold star Panasonic 3DO with the disc, you know, that came out. Yeah, and I, nice. I had the, the Jaguar, I had the Saturn. I mean, I had them all and I just became, you know, obsessed with having all these consoles. But, uh, you know, you, you get a little older and then for some reason, video games kind of got on the back burner because I started to just go out more. I want to go out more. You start hanging out with people. Girls come in the picture. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, so a lot of my consoles went away, except for I had to I hung on to the PlayStation one for a while. Um, and that was it until about 2001, I left and joined the military. And okay. while I was in the military, the next console for me was, um, the GameCube. That was the next con that was like the, that was me getting back into gaming was the GameCube. So, and I had that okay. in the military for quite some time until, and I stayed strictly Nintendo for a while. I'm not sure why, but hmm. I went to the Wii and then to the Wii U. And then one day I was just so tired of the Wii U not getting Call of Duty anymore or, or any of the Ar <laughs> any of the yeah. And they weren't getting the Arkham games anymore because I love the Batman Arkham games. Yeah. And I'm like, this is this is bull, man. What am I supposed to do? Like my hands are tied. <laughs> I call my buddy Adam up. He's from he's from Washington. He's from McCleary, Washington. Okay. And he's like, and so he's like, he's like, dude, get an Xbox. Cause of course, you know, he's from Washington, right? Yeah. Washington, Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I, that's how, what's that's what got me into Xbox with him, and then I got all the Xboxes after that. So I I will I will defend your buddy a little bit and say that that around that era it was probably what the the three sixty, 
Uh, uh no, I got so the first me jumping to Xbox, I got the Xbox uh the one, the S. The, okay, yeah. yeah. Um the the call specifically for like Call of Duty and, and like the Arkham games, Xbox was the right platform to play those on. Um, you know, PlayStation had a fantastic library uh from the two all the way up through the, the PS4, but like if you want to play shooters and if you want to play those kinds of like action games, it was uh-huh. Xbox was the way to go. And not yeah. and not just because I also live in the Northwest. Like <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The consoles all definitely mean. have their strengths, you know, and, and PlayStation uh didn't have the Insomniac Spider Man games back then yet. So <laughs> Yeah. 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 For a while their Xbox had the Spider Man's and now it's like the other way around. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, Sony and their their whole licensing thing, you know. Um, yeah. Especially since Marvel took off, Sony is just clinging to that Spider-Man license, like, you know, like, yeah. like they, like it'll, you know, t- to save their lives. Uh, <laughs> we, we got to, man. Uh, yeah. Else. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got um, Hell Divers for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hell Divers is doing really well, man. Like, I, I haven't even touched it uh, yet. I, I haven't had a chance. I. Something like that, I'd probably be more inclined to play on PC these days. Yeah, uh, I hear it's great on there too for convenience sake. Yeah. Um, and because you know, I got this PC rig sitting on my desk, I got to do something with it, right? You got to use it besides podcast. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm surprised. I'm and I'm impressed that that Sony's got a real hit on their hands with the Hell Diver stuff. Yeah, incredible. Good, and and I'm not one of those people. I'm I don't I'm not xbox pro you know like i'm pro xbox and you know you know oh, there's yeah. that i'm a i just like gaming man i'll play on anything i don't care so i always thought the console wars were silly like uh, you know everybody would ask me um because i started you know mid 2000s I, I started a video gaming column and at my newspaper in college okay. uh and then i had my first podcast in 09 and we did that for a few years and so i would have people come up to me and ask me all the time like hey man you know who you like in the in the console wars xbox or playstation and uh and i'd always give them one of two answers either why not both or uh or my answer would be uh c nintendo and (laughs) what are you talking about nintendo's not a real console man nintendo is eating everyone's lunch by being the second console in the family you either have an xbox or a playstation but everybody had a had a wii as the like second option and Nintendo was completely fine with that because they were crying all the way to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never get rid of Nintendo. <laughs> uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Nintendo's Nintendo does a few things that, that, you know, just on like on a professional level, there's a few things that like, I'm, I'm not super happy about, but I get it. Right. Uh, yeah. But in terms of just being a fan of video games, like they, they own some of the best first party properties. Their yeah. consoles are always fun. Uh, I, I'm not saying all this just because they named a console after me. That was pure coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> the switch. <laughs> uh, but that's good. But genuinely, uh, I you know you you mentioned that you were you were pretty strict Nintendo for a while, and honestly, I, my story is very similar. I had a Sega Genesis. Um, my house was broken into in 1996, which was a real bummer. And, uh, and so, um, my parents got some insurance money to cover some of the stuff that was stolen, including my Genesis. And so my mom goes, all right, I got to buy you a new, a new video game. What do you want? And, uh, and I walked into EB games and there was a Sega CDX sitting on the shelf and my, my, my Genesis had been stolen and my brand new portable CD player that I got for my birthday had also been stolen out of our house. Yeah. And I said, Mom, if you buy me one of those, it'll replace two two devices in one. Uh, and so I had a, CD, a CDX for a while until Smart. until I uh, sold it in a classified ad for a Nintendo 64. Oh, man. <laughs> With that and kind of machine, man. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, so... So I certainly have, though, man, we, I we have all at least did. one regret in, in my gaming history. <laughs> we all did something like that, though. You know what I mean? You're not the only one. We all did something. Like, and then we look um, back on it. And we're like, God, man, if only we knew. Yeah. 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 
Uh, but but you know my uh, my N sixty four led to my GameCube, and my GameCube led to you know Wii and three sixty and PS two and and beyond. So yeah. um yeah, man, I I've always been a big Nintendo fan, and uh, even though I started out with the Sega Genesis in the nineties, um, you know I still had a lot of love and respect for Nintendo, and so same yeah um, yeah I just I you know as long as it's uh, as long as it's a video game and it's fun like I I really don't care what platform it's on. Yeah. So, Agreed. so let me ask you this then. Uh, so you, you were in the military for a while, and then eventually you kind of like circled back to gaming. Um, what is it that you like to do now? Like you know, aside from the collecting side of things and making YouTube videos, uh, you know what what when you when you get some time to yourself and you decide, you know, I want to sit down and I'm going to fire up a video game and I'm going to play something. Uh, what are you playing and and uh, you know, what's like, what's your favorite way to, to spend time? Yeah. Well, most of the times, uh, I do try and go to the gym a lot. Um, and okay. then when I'm not going to the gym, we go on a lot of walks. We like to travel as much as we can. Um, then I like to, I like to take road trips. So I go to a lot of the expos now, but I like to drive. Nice. Um, but yeah, when I'm not doing and when I just want to be home though, and not do anything, um, right now I've mostly been playing the Evercade. It's like my favorite console right now. No kidding. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like really addicted to it. Um, and then second most played console right now is the Xbox 360. So really? I've been, yeah, I've been trying to, I've got a backlog of games are on the floor right now. I've got a stack of games I need to finish. And uh, I then back there in the corner, I have the game standing up like this that I know are finished. And then the ones sideways are the ones I still got to play there too. So <laughs> So that way I don't, I don't forget, you know. Um, yeah, at least you got a system in place, right? Yeah, I have to because there's a <laughs> there's a lot. I'm still trying to tackle like some Wii U games. I've got a bunch I got to finish, but uh, I would say though right now, I I just I love the Evercade. I love coming home, and I just like uh, the first thing I want to do is play a couple of those cartridges. And um, I don't know, I just find it it takes me back. I guess when I turn it on, it feels it has that older feel to it, you know. Put in a cartridge and turn it on the TV and. Uh, cause I don't have a lot of the older consoles like that anymore. I don't have like the super Nintendo or the Genesis anymore. Um, I've yeah. downsized a lot of my stuff and have turned to a lot of uh, emulation. Honestly, I've got like a modded original Xbox that's loaded with like the Sega library. Um, and that's mm. good for me, you know, cause you can use like the Sega controllers and it still feels like you're playing the older yeah. stuff. Um, but it's just too much. I, I had everything hooked up and just so much, man, there's so many, cables and hdmi things you gotta and then i just like i couldn't i had to downsize yeah. and with the amount of games i have in here even right now i could be fine for probably the next 50 years and not have to buy another system or you know yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i mean but if you like if you take the nes for example uh you know you're talking almost 40 years going back to the nes and the 2600 you're, yeah. you're talking 40 years of gaming hardware that you have to figure out how to make it all work on yeah. one television like it's it's a massive undertaking just to make the thing work and yeah. so uh uh you know i was in a conversation recently with someone about you know emulating and uh the validity of it and using it for reviews and stuff like that and uh you know it it, it just it it's it's it becomes a practical solution more than anything yeah. because who who has the space, let alone the time and technology, for forty years of hardware? I don't yeah. think that I think that I don't think that should be the um the the sort of end all barrier. The, you know, it's it's one of those gatekeepy things where it's like, oh, if you're not playing on, you know, an original Genesis one, then you know, what are you even doing, bro? It's like, yeah, enjoying myself. You're, you're a Piss off. loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm having fun. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like you said too. Like, I have a PC cab that I completely modded out that has all like a just a ton of retro games in it, and I love it because it's so streamlined. Yeah. And all I gotta do is be like, I want to play this game. I go to it and I start playing it, and then that's it. Because I don't have there's time is the issue with us man we're all getting older we we don't want to think that we are but we are <laughs> you know the earth's so, so true spinning, man it <laughs> so, is so true 
So I just want to play. I just want whatever time I have. I just want to play. And so if I can turn it on the quickest and get into it the quickest, um, you know, it's just the yeah. way it is, man. But I, I don't I love retro uh, hardware. I love the old stuff, man. But I just it, it, it's not practical for me these days, you know, with with, yeah. like, with the time constraints that we have right now. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you win the lottery and don't have to work for a living anymore. And yeah, all of a sudden have all the time in the world. I mean, who knows? Maybe that maybe that maybe the situation might be different, but uh, I think so, know, man, because I don't work now. I have all the time in the world now and I still don't have enough time. To play all these games. Yeah. OK. You'd that's... Be surprised with what pops up when you're not working, man. You're like, oh, man, I, you know, I, I got to fix the yard or the fridge broke or, you know, what yeah. I mean? like so, there's something new every day, man. And you're just like, man, maybe I should just go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, uh I got I got laid off from my day job and uh back in like October. And uh and I had a couple DJing things going on. So I was like I was like basically fine through the end of the year. But then um in January I was like, All right, I'm gonna start that podcast. And uh and here we are. It's you know, end of February. Today's today's the beginning of March. And uh after two months of working on this thing, like it was supposed to be a monthly podcast. Yeah. And it very quickly turned into a weekly podcast. Uh, and so, like, this is the job now. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. Are you, but are you happy? Because that's what matters. Uh, you know? I, I'm going to tell you this. I will take this all day, every day over working for anyone else. Yeah. I'm I get to be my way. own boss, make my own hours, manage my own schedule, do my own thing. You know, it's yeah. it's the absolute best. So, you know, yeah. it's I'm not making a living at it yet, but, uh, you know, it's you still will. early days. You will, though. I see it, man. I see the potential. So <laughs> that's so sweet of you. Thank you very much, man. Um, well, you got you got to be positive, man. The world's just so I don't know. It's just so sometimes I just get bummed out by how bad it can be. And so a bunch of us has to just keep bringing each other up. That's just all you can do every day, man. You just got to affect one person. Right. So, yeah, no, that's absolutely true. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, this episode is is. um uh, there's there's been a batch of episodes recently that have been uh, sponsored by my very first sponsor ever. You know, like I said, I started podcasting in 09 and and it was this show that finally got me my first sponsor and uh, my sponsor relationship is going really well. And and, um, you know, it's uh, it's just enough to sort of cover the costs on things. So, like yeah. I said, I'm, like I'm not making a living yet, but it's it's such a it's such a peek into what I'm hoping this thing will build into and become yeah. uh, that I I'm so excited because, you know, I don't need, you know, I, I I've talked about this before um, with like other friends of mine about, you know, when it comes to content creating and stuff, I don't need a Lamborghini. I'm six foot four. I wouldn't fit in one of those things anyway. <laughs> like yeah. I honestly, it, I just want to be able to like make my mortgage and, 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 you know, be able to like feed my family. Yeah, and, sure. And if that's if that's as far as I ever get, if that's as famous as I ever get, that is plenty for me. Yeah, uh, it makes you a rich man, sir. I'm saying, man, like I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't need a lot in this world. I need some video games to play, which I've got, and uh, and a little bit of music, which I've got, and and then you know just some some good friends to share it with. Yeah, so, music is key, man. Music is the glue of the world, so that's what keeps <laughs> it all together. I I couldn't agree more. Man. I mean these these shelves you see behind me are still kind of a mess uh i i keep i keep threatening to to put my records away from the retro game expo but they're still they're still stored in the road in the road case right now because um i i you know i want to sort of reorganize everything uh before i go and start putting everything back up there but uh but you know even just um like talking with that friend of mine you know you and i were chatting sort of before we started recording about about that friend of mine that runs kiraga records that vgm mm -hmm. label um and uh you know like i i keep buying his stuff because it's just so good and and uh uh you know partly because i enjoy it so much but also because i see how the stuff that he's putting out will sort of like help me long term connect with this gaming community that i love so much um you know it's why i'm it's why i play the music at the expo it's why i'm doing the podcast and collaborating with the expo on the podcast uh, you know, it's all about like bringing people together. That's the thing yep. that like really drives me and, 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 uh, makes me want to do this thing. So. 
Folks, I am thrilled to announce that this episode has once again been sponsored by Vault 31 Bar. Vault 31 is a state-of-the-art shelter designed by the best minds in the business for absolutely anyone that's 21 plus and lives for all things video games and geek culture. If you need to quench your thirst after a long day in the wasteland, Vault 31 offers an incredible selection of beverages and signature cocktails to help you rehydrate. Or if you're hungry, they've got plenty of delicious options available from their kitchen, including their new Smirchbergs or my recently discovered favorite, the Batcave. Since they are a gaming bar, they have tons of PC and console games available to play. And whether you hail from the Brotherhood, the Institute, the Atom Cats, or the Minutemen, every nerd from New California to the Commonwealth is welcome here. Vault 31 is just off East Mill Plain in Vancouver, Washington, and only a short 10 to 12 minute trip across the river from the Portland International Airport. Be sure to visit them at vault31bar.com or at vault31bar on Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube, and Twitch. Vault 31 is easily one of my favorite hangout spots in the greater Portland area, which is why I'm both flattered and excited to be partnering with them on bringing you future episodes of this podcast. Please be sure to check out their events calendar to find out what they'll be up to next. And when you do get a chance to stop by, please let them know I sent you. Maybe I'll even see you there. And with that, let's get back to the show. You you had a similar uh, experience on Facebook, uh, bringing people together. Um, and this was yeah. this was part of a conversation that uh, that I had with uh, Chris from Game Dad. Uh, he, he's like, he's like, yeah, man, I was, cause, cause after, after the show, usually, uh, with my guests, I'll be like, Hey man, so who do you think would be a good fit for the show? Um, and it wasn't just Chris. I had a couple other mutual friends of ours mention you as well. But, uh, Chris was like, dude, you got to get Richard Rob on here. And I was like, <laughs> really? And he goes, yeah, man, he's, he's been working on the YouTube channel and, and, and that's going good. But like he had 30,000 people on a Facebook group and then the Facebook group got shut down. Yeah. So yeah. can you tell me that a little bit about that story? First of all, uh, how did you grow to get those kind of numbers on Facebook of all places? And then how did, like, what happened with Facebook when they stepped in? How did that all go down? Well, let me thank Chris because he's such a cool dude, man. And I know him, obviously, through Jay. Um, and those dudes are just like, man, they're just, there's just such wholesome, good dudes, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really, that's really awesome that they, they said something nice. Um yeah, it was so it was just the retro Rob page. It was just my page. It was just me. I was the only moderator. And um, I I grew it to almost 30,000. It was like 29 something before I woke up uh, in December this last year and it was unpublished by Facebook. And the only uh, the only answer they gave me was violation of community standards. But, so, <laughs> <laughs> and so what does that even mean? Uh, I don't know. That's the only I couldn't get an answer from them. I couldn't get um, I couldn't get in contact with them. There was some numbers that uh, I found online. Friends were sending me phone numbers like try this phone number. And these phone numbers were like crazy sketchy. Like these guys did not sound like they work for Meta. Yeah, and they were asking no. some questions that to me didn't seem like, um, you know, applied to the situation. So I didn't I didn't use the phone route. Right. Then I got several emails, email sources, including Facebook's email. And I emailed them a, a bunch of times and I got no return from them. Uh, me and a bunch of people called them out on Twitter. We were asking them on Twitter every day, tagging Meta, tagging Facebook. I was messaging them to their um, inbox on Twitter as well. I got no yeah. response. It was pretty It was pretty crazy. A lot of people were trying to help out. But um, at the end of the day, no one ever got back to me and I, I had to move on. So. I'm just taking a peek on Facebook real quick just to see if I could find anything. And it's just, a, it, there's nothing. No, there's, a, so there's a clone page. They cloned my page, someone did, and they took my Game Boy. That used to be the symbol of my page because I told you how much the Game Boy meant to me. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yep. And so a lot of people have been commenting on there, leaving bad reviews, saying it's a scam page. This isn't the real Retro Rob. And yet that page is allowed to exist, but they took mine down, even though that page has been reported like probably a thousand, if not more times. And Facebook's like, whatever. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's that's pretty awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it, the, the thing that disappoints me most about those, I created this page to foster this community of like positivity and everyone on there. Yeah. There was no toxicity. There was no no arguing. No one ever came in there and like, 
everyone got along. It was crazy. And for that many followers to not even have one, one I never got any trolls or anything. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Like I, I curated this masterpiece and I'm not saying this to brag, but right. it was legit a place where people could go. And I posted like ads in the evening of like, you know, great pictures of games from back in the day. And then during the morning from like morning till midday was just little, little tidbits of gaming history with like the game cover itself, you know, like maybe it came out on that day or, and then the rest was just like silly memes and, um, Mm. and that was it. And then I had a knock it off category where I made fun of like knockoff toys and people love the knock, knock, knock it off was probably my favorite category. Um, and yeah, they shut it down. And I think it's disappointing because it was for the people, man. It wasn't for me. It was for them. It wasn't for me at all. I didn't. I was just happy that people could take a minute out of their day and be like, oh, man, I remember this game, you know? And like, what makes it even funnier to me, though, is that I waited a month and then I started a new Retro Rob page. And two months uh, later here, about like a week or two ago, they shut that down, too. They took that one away from me. And for the same thing, violation of community standards. So I'm like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, that's that's weird, man. And it's weird it's that they would. Weird. It's weird that they would just give you the axe without really giving you a reason or any kind of like no path for resolution. Did, they, did nope. they give you an email to be like, hey, email us if if, this, if even, you think this is even the email said violation of community standards. That was it. And then it, the funnier part, too, is like when you tried to re-log into the page, it would say log in so that you could appeal it, but I couldn't log <sighs> in because it was, it was, it was unpublished. Man. Right? So it was a circle of stupidity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, like the, the thing about it though, is like, I took the month off and during that month I learned editing. I learned how to make videos, uh, mm. Jay and Chris from the, you know, Jay and, uh, from square pegs and game dad taught me some stuff they they helped me out uh every time i had a question they're like you should do this and so luckily that channel has has taken off in the in the way that the retro rob facebook page did and i'm also gaining a lot of people back from the facebook page and they're like you know what just go with youtube stay with youtube so yeah i just didn't want to do youtube because i wasn't i didn't really want to be in front of the camera (laughs) i wanted to just do written word and hide and be like you know what i mean yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, in 2024, like being on camera is about the only way to really like a solidify your identity because, yeah. you know, it's it's I mean, yes, AI is a thing and it's getting better, but whatever, like really like it's it's hard to fake just an authentic person on a video. Um, right. Uh, you know, because even AI is as good as it's getting, the authenticity still just isn't there, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But then also, like, honestly, man, like, if you're if you're doing those kinds of numbers, you should be diversifying your brand anyway. You know, if if you think of yourself as a brand and and you spread yourself out to multiple platforms, you know, then say you start a discord channel, but you also have your YouTube. Right. And so, like, if something happens to your YouTube, you can go to discord and be like, hey, everybody, here's what happened to my YouTube and here's where we're going next. Yeah, I've been told I should definitely look into Discord next. So, and listen, man, like, and I'll just tell you right now on camera, like, I am super down to help with that. Uh, you know, when it comes to being able to diversify across multiple platforms and, and, um, you know, organizing, uh, content for cross posting and stuff like that, like, yeah, absolutely hit me up. Don't be shy. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, so far I've been, uh, building my Twitter is getting bigger and I've got Instagram cool. too. So a lot of people are finding me on those for right now, but yeah, I do definitely want to get something else just in case. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Chris from game dad gave me your, like your personal Facebook page. Um, uh, yeah. but yep. I will, I will absolutely hit you up on Instagram cause, uh, yeah. uh, I should be following you over there too. Yeah, I was going to friend request you, but I was like, well, it's probably too soon. He's probably going to freak out because he just asked me on the show. I was going to friend request you like that that day. (laughs) Nah, man. Hit me. Let's do it. Uh, You're a weirdo, man. (laughs) Nah, we cool. We cool. Uh, Listen, the way I see it, if you're going to come on this podcast, we're past that point. Okay. Uh, Because I'm not going to just have anybody on the podcast. You know what I mean? All right. I decided. I was like, play it cool, man. Wait a few days. (laughs) (laughs) okay so (laughs) so listen man let me ask you this then uh 
you you go through all this headache with Facebook and building the Facebook group and building out this community. And it sounds like the community by and large was successful yep. if there was no toxicity and people were cool with each other and, and found like a really great place to hang out and be nerds together. So what, where do you see a community like that being able to grow and like, what, what do you see being able to do in the future Hopefully, if if things continue to kind of swing back in, in that direction for you. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough question. Um, the thing about having that Facebook page is that I made it a point to answer every single comment on there every day and mm -hmm. give a reaction to a comment every day. And that took a lot of work because I'd get probably a thousand or so comments a day. Yeah, but what was great about it is that I want people to be heard. Like people, people take the time to comment on these pages or to comment on our channels. And I want them to know that someone actually heard it. And so now with YouTube, I'm doing the same thing as Facebook is that I'm answering every single comment. Even if it's a negative one, I still tell that person they're awesome. I'm like, you're awesome, dude. You're not mad at me. I know you're not mad at me. And they can keep trolling if they want to, but it's not going to bring me down. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that I want to keep fostering that type of community. It just does. I just it can be anywhere, though. It can so be you're YouTube. a superhero. That's well, how it's <laughs> how how could you possibly get that much trolling and be like, you know what, dude, you're still pretty awesome. Like that in and of itself is such an incredibly rare and invaluable talent, man. Because they're not, like I said, they're not mad at me. They're just mad. They're mad maybe at themselves. Something is something is obviously off in their life, and they just need a, they need to say something, and maybe it makes them feel better if they if they call me an idiot or say like, you know, my my stuff sucks. <laughs> but you know what? Then That's I did true. my job, right? Yeah. It's, it, someone's gonna have a good day from me, whether it's from that or from the positivity of they like the game I did. But at least I'm doing something, right? So that's what that's, you, that's, that's that's what I got to take away from it. Honestly, dude, that's 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 incredible. That's yeah. I really applaud that. Thanks. Um, I know it sounds fake or corny or whatever, but man, it's no. not, that's a god honest truth, man. You can ask a lot of people that followed my page before, and you know, there's no point in having a public page or a public channel if you don't interact with the public. They're here for us, man. We wouldn't be anything without them. So I don't want to leave somebody hanging, you know. Well, and I'll tell you, man, from 25 years of experience of working in the entertainment business, uh, I'm and I'm sure you feel the same way I do. I'm also here for them. Yep. It's not just that they're there for me, but also I'm there for them. Yeah. Uh, and and, you know, I wouldn't have been able to build the small community that I have without really like solidifying for those folks like, no, I really mean it when I say that. Yeah. And and you spread uh, and joy too with music, man. That's what really, yeah. like I said, like, people need that. So Yeah, well, and you know, uh I, as as much as I love music, uh I also love video games and that's part of the yeah. reason why I'm so excited about this podcast opportunity because I can talk with folks like you that sort of scratch that other itch for me yeah. b besides the music thing, also the video game thing, you know. Nice. Um Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one of the things that I've talked to a bunch of our mutual friends about already uh, is experiences in the sort of greater uh, gaming event scene. Um, you know, I, I chatted with uh, my friend Jason that, that helped get the Game On Expo in Phoenix off the ground. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I talked with Hancock, Riggs, Jay, Chris. Uh, you know, they all had stories about other conventions around the country. Um, you know, have you, have you been to Portland, I guess would be my first question is, is have you yeah, made it well, out to Portland I have, yet? I've been to Portland, the city on many occasions, but I haven't gone to the gaming expo yet. It's on my mm -hmm. list though. I do want to go. It's on my list. Yeah. We got to fix so, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but I as, love Portland. I love the whole, I told you before we got online that i I'm a big fan of the Pacific Northwest, man. Yeah. I feel like it was probably where I was meant to live. Uh, I'm from Chicago, which is strange. And and I live in Texas, which is stranger. <laughs> so, no no joke. Yeah. Two of my best friends here in Portland are from Chicago. Oh really? Like just yeah. separately, they never knew each other. They're from completely opposite sides of Chicago, 
but both of them originally came from Chicago and ended up out here in Portland and they love it here. I was gonna work. I was gonna. I had a job lined up out there. My my best friend I told you about, Adam. He uh, was living in McCleary, Washington, and but then the pandemic hit, and his other the other company that I was gonna work for folded, and then Adam had had enough with Seattle with everything that was going on during the pandemic with the city, and you know what, man, they packed all their stuff up, they liquidated everything, and they moved to the Big Island in Hawaii, and. The dude's a legit farmer. He farms. He's a farm. His whole family are farmers. And I've been out there now and I'm going out there again soon actually to visit him. And it's the life, man. It is the life. Like yeah. it is paradise. And he's his own boss and he provides fresh produce and, and food and, and stuff to the island. He's got about, I think, 20 different places he goes to. And I'm, I, I love it, man. Every time I go visit out there, it's the most peaceful place ever. Um, but anyways, so I never, I didn't wind up in the Pacific Northwest. Like I, I, for year, I was telling people for years, that's where I was going to live too. I'm like, Oh, I can't wait, man. Once I retire from the military, I'm going to Washington. And then it all, it all <laughs> fell through. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's life, man. So you just roll, you just roll with the next thing. So well, I chose Texas because this is my first training base, uh, in the military. So this area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what part of Texas? I'm in North Texas, so I'm basically I could throw okay. a rock at Oklahoma right now. So. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, the Northwest is still here. Uh, global warming hasn't got us yet. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, man, I, I got to tell you, my wife, uh, not my wife, my mom, my mom grew up on Oahu. Um, and uh, so we, we went back to visit the islands uh, when I was a kid and. That is so hard to compete with. Uh, it's Very. you know it's it's tough, especially if you're um, uh, what they call Howley or an outsider. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's <laughs> it can be tough to like really get your footing there and 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 build a um, you know build a, a a circle around yourself. Uh, yeah. But if you've got people there already, um, and th- like man. It's uh yeah it's 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 definitely it's definitely everything that they show on on TV and movies man like that's yeah, he's, that's real he's he's <laughs> killing it man I love him he's basically like my brother man so now that's I have to let him cool. know that uh to watch this cuz uh, he normally he's got pretty shady uh internet being in Hawaii so it's going to take everything he's got to watch this show but he'll do it <laughs> I mean you know, it's available on Spotify as well as YouTube. So if you if okay. can pick it up on Spotify, maybe that'll be a little easier on his connection. Yeah, but, perfect. Uh, uh, man, so I know you haven't been able to make it out to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo yet, but like what what other expos around the the retro gaming community have you been to? And do you have any like crazy stories from winning one of those? No. Um, so I got a really good friend, uh, Gene. He's from Capsoft Gaming. Um, we met uh online during the pandemic he was a follower on my page facebook okay and um when everyone was kind of in that lockdown state of mind Mm -hmm. uh i got really big into rpg style games because you i had all this time right and so what better than to go on like an adventure or a quest to take you away from what was going on during that time yeah and uh, i fell in love with that uh stranger things game it was based on the tv show i don't know if you ever played that yeah it was, I, d- I didn't get a chance to play it no yeah i just thought it was a fantastic game and i, I know it's one you talk about though the little like sick yeah. little like eight bit one that yeah it's a throwback yeah, yeah. to like yeah kind of gave me like um like uh, earthbound vibes kind of you know yeah 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 and so he commented one time was like yo what's this game and how can i play it and uh (laughs) one thing led to another and it turns out he does like a similar podcast like you so he had me on the show while i was i was living in alaska actually i lived in alaska for about seven years Mm -hmm. and um so he had me on the show and then we just became best friends and then next thing you know i went out to boston about a year ago or so to where he's from and uh, he he invited me into his house and we went to uh, pax east so that was my first time going to PAX out in Boston. And um, that was yeah. so that was not necessarily a crazy story, but that was my that was my really starting to get into expos at that time, post post pandemic. And uh, yeah, he's a great friend. And from there, I went to um, Classic Game Fest in Austin. It's the first time I met Brett Weiss. And then okay. I got invited out to Ohio last year when I had the Facebook page. I was I like to. 
that's the other thing about having it paid is I like to promote other people, man. I was all about sharing everybody's stuff because, you know, and so small businesses, especially. So there was a place called Strange Records and uh, Bigfoot Gaming, and they're in Morrow, Ohio. And okay. those, those people are absolute saints, man. Absolute <laughs> saints. Really? Bigfoot Gaming runs a place in the community where kids can come off the streets and go play retro games for the cheap in this little man. community. And Strange Records is in that same building and they have music and everything and they throw on concerts there. Dude, I'm telling you, if, if, if anyone watches this and they've never been to Morrow, Ohio, it is a gem hidden in the United States that we all must go at least once a year too. I'm telling you. Just this cool um, little nerd mecca, huh? It is. And so anyways, they invited me out and they had a retro Rob day out there and they made what? me a banner. Yeah, they made me a banner and like. Um, I went out there for the day and I was hanging out in this building. I got to meet the town and they all came out to hang out with me. And, and then, and then from there I went to <laughs> Torg. I went to the Torg gaming expo right up North to Columbus yeah. for the weekend. And then that's where I finally got to meet Jay in person and Chris and, uh, John Hancock and all them. And, uh, yeah. And it's dude, it's been such a crazy journey, man. If you told me like 10 years ago that I, you know, I'd be doing any of this or being friends with these channels that I watched for so long, you know, I'd be like, you're nuts. Like, you're absolutely yeah. nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so funny, man. I, I said the exact same thing to, uh, uh, Riggs, uh, John Riggs and I were talking about, uh, being friends with, uh, Tim Ketsrow, the, the voice yeah. of NBA jam. Yeah, and I was awesome, like, man, if, awesome, if you told, awesome. if you told little Jeff, uh that's my real name uh if you told little jeff that uh the guy in the the guy doing the voice in the video game like you were gonna like hang out with that guy one day like i would have like it's, it's, i would have called you a liar you know like nuts, there's man. no way it's um, so nuts but yeah. uh yeah man i you know I, pax was one of my first like really big gaming conventions okay. um 20 pax 2010 uh my wife and i well she was my girlfriend at the time uh but she had a couple of tickets and she goes do you want to go to pax and at that point i was about a year into my first video game podcast after having spent a couple of years writing a video game column so i was like uh yes uh we went and spent an amazing weekend in seattle for uh pax west um and uh i think i think at the time it was it was called pax prime or something but uh yeah, man, that it's 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 really really funny how similar uh, a lot of our stories are. Just you know, having that coming from a place of like I can't believe I get to do this. Yeah, like, this is like this is such a cool like it's 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 cool to be able to like manifest something like this, but also to have the presence to be like man, like really appreciate it. You know? Oh yeah, I'll never lose this feeling. I get excited even when I talk to them. If I if I talk to them in a text or something, man, I'm just like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> people ask me on these shows man and i get so excited i'll never lose that feeling man uh, never I'll, I'll be honest i've lost a little bit of that just because i've known Riggs and hancock for over a decade at this point like those are oh, just okay. my buddies now like those, like we're yeah. you know they're, we're just homies uh um and Riggs, you know it's funny Riggs still has the record for longest record time on this show uh because i try to i try to keep this show to about an hour with a little yeah. bit extra for the patreon folks yeah Riggs and i ran for two hours my wife actually got mad at me she's like you've Holy been in there smoke. for so long i was like yeah. i was talking to my friend we were hanging out yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man so uh, <laughs> um all right one last question for you uh yep. As as we're as we're kind of like you know we we got a little bit to go here but uh, I'm curious you know with your with your travel experience um, and uh, you know some of the other uh, expos and conventions and things that you've been to um, what would you recommend for someone who is uh, may, maybe looking to get into collecting maybe not but uh, let's you know what let's go with not necessarily looking to collect, but looking to have a good time and enjoy the culture. Like what do you think is, is the best advice for somebody who wants to spend more time in the retro gaming culture and, and enjoy themselves? You talking about as far as like visiting like expos and stuff or just, you know, like, like finding cool places to hang out like that spot in Ohio you were talking about, or, or like, like, like what, what, advice would you have for somebody that wants to be around more nerds who like the same stuff they do 
Oh yeah. Well, I mean, definitely got a uh, social media is key, I guess, as far as finding like locations of stuff, you know, or just interests, general interests, mm-hmm. hobbies, that kind of stuff. But I mean, I don't know how I would find out about anything otherwise, because I live in kind of a shell here, you know, like, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess just the best thing I could say is just get out and go. Like, don't 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 be afraid to just get out of the house and just take off. You know, if you have the means, I'm not just saying like, you know, quit your job and run away. But like <laughs> if, if you if you have that, like I prefer traveling by road because I see parts of America that I don't get to see. And I take different routes that I've never been before. And I stay yeah. at different towns that I've never been before. And when you're in those towns, look up what what is there to do there? You know, look up your interests and I guarantee you're going to find something amazing and then document it and then just go from that. And then that could be a jumping off point for other States for stuff to, to search for, you know, all that um, stuff yeah. that you miss when you're flying over it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to drive. It's not because I'm afraid to fly. It's just driving is just, I, I I'm kind of a dummy. Like I don't have a, like a, a brain that really uh, functions as, and I just put on music and I can just, you know, drive for miles and miles and not, you know, (laughs) yeah. And so, um, yeah, I just, you got to get out, man, and just see what's, see what's around you, see what's in your state, start with your own state, start with your own neighborhood. I, I didn't even know, like until a few months ago that I've got a mobile arcade family, uh, two, two houses over, they literally travel around the town with a mobile arcade on the back of their truck and people can, they lure down the little thing and you can go in there and they have all these arcades and stuff and you can play wherever they set up. I like in no a idea. horse trailer? Like, yeah, like well, a- more or less. It's just a long trailer, but yeah. So, and they have it wired up for electricity. So they plug into wherever they're at. And it, all of a sudden, the, all the arcades come on. They got lights <laughs> on, the, on the on the walls on there. And Man, I that no sounds idea, awesome. Dude. I know. That sounds it's totally so awesome. So fun. Yeah, it's totally awesome. And so I, would, I had no idea if I'd never left my house. I just went downtown one day. I just went down to the main downtown and I found an awesome arcade that I still go to today. It's a local our cereal bar. They have cereal and it's ten dollars all you can play. And it's like a dollar fifty eight for a bowl of each additional cereal. Man, yeah, so who, who cool. doesn't like cereal and video games? Speaking of speaking of rigs, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um actually Vault yeah. 31 bar, the the sponsor for this show, uh, they they do something similar. It's like it's like f- f- five bucks with an open tab and you can play all the games you want. And they have huge libraries every nintendo console every xbox console every yeah, playstation man. console like yep they That's are the they are town, man. so serious about you know giving people a place to experience games they might not otherwise be able to or yep. just making sure that like if you're here we will find a way for you to have some fun yeah, we don't want you to key ever right leave there, here. man. That's key right there. Find a place like that. They're, they're in your town right now. I guarantee you, whoever watches this and they're like, I don't know where to start with retro gaming. Oh, you, know, you, you do, man. It's in your, I guarantee there's one in your town. There's someone close by that's going to, that's yeah. going to have an opportunity for you to experience something new, different, fun that you Absolutely. might not have been able to otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Man, I really love that. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I, I know I've told you a million times when I, we message each other, but I'm, like I said, I'll never stop being appreciative of this kind of stuff, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the pleasure was mine. Uh, listen, before we go, is there anything you want to plug? Any place that you think people should be able to go and find you? I know you mentioned Instagram, YouTube. You want to call those out one more time? Uh, no, that's good, man. I mean, you, you said it. I'm, uh, I've got Instagram and on YouTube right now. I don't see a f- Facebook in the future for a while. I'm taking a little break. So <laughs> but, I, I don't blame yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, YouTube's, YouTube's going well, man. <laughs> but it's just, is it just retro Rob on all of those? Yep. Uh, YouTube is retro Rob. It's got my ugly mug in the picture. So you can't, you can't miss it. So it's that <laughs> you can find it at, at retro believer. So Okay, that's what that, I used to call the all the people who followed my page. I called them the retro believers. So. Got it. Okay, so yeah. at retro believer on YouTube. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right. Well, retro Rob, thank you so much for hanging out today. Yes, sir. Thank you. As we come to the end of this episode, folks, I want to give a big thank you to Retro Rob for spending time and hanging out with me. Of course, if you want to find out more information about this show or find out more about retro rob or any of my other guests you can hit me up at dj switch pdx on all the social stuff facebook instagram uh tiktok youtube twitch 
Uh, and of course, patreon.com slash DJ switch PDX, where you'll be able to find extra content as well. Uh, thank you to retro Rob. Thank you to my sponsor vault 31 bar. And of course, thanks to all of you for hanging out and taking the time to enjoy this interview. I will see you on the next one.